what's up guys and welcome to my channel and if you're not new here welcome back today i'm going over the breakdown of our vacation to kenya how we're able to find hotels activities and stuff like that because a lot of people have been asking these questions and they've been asking did you use a travel agency to book your vacation the answer is no i did everything by myself i did research months ahead that trip was planned six months in advance to make sure that we had everything that we needed so these are the things that i'll be covering today flights hotels activities and transportation if you see me looking down it's because i have everything written down and i don't want to miss anything i use expedia to book all my flight i use the expedia app so i'm able to book the flight within the app that way i can see everything that i've booked in there and also when i book my flights i book them months ahead because we plan months ahead so we get the flights a little cheaper and also we do it with the insurance so if anything because you know life happens if you have to cancel it or if you have to change a date or anything like that you're still able to do it without any extra costs also i have a travel planner i will link it down below i use it to track all my travels everywhere that i've been to cities countries my favorite foods and everything so check that out i will link that down below and everything that i mentioned today i will link it down below as well the hotels that we stayed at in nairobi the first one was raha suites we spent six days there and it cost us $230. So it was very budget friendly. The hotel had a restaurant downstairs. So we're able to go down there, sit down and eat, whether it's breakfast or dinner. One thing that it didn't have was uh, any elevator. So you have to go up the steps, but they do have people there that will help you with your bags up the steps. They didn't have any AC in the room, but you can request a fan and they will give you a fan and it works very well. But my thing is when I go somewhere, I'm not really in the hotel, so I don't really spend as much on a hotel. I would rather spend that money outside to do activities because I only need the hotel to sleep anyway. That's how I look at it. So if you're looking to travel on a budget, you can definitely check out Raha Suites. It's pretty clean. The staff is very friendly and um it's a local hotel as well so it's not like all the other hotels but it does what it's supposed to do the next hotel that we stayed at was easy hotel we stayed there for one night and that was the last day of us uh being in nairobi so we had went to akunda came back and then we spent that last day at that hotel um in nairobi before we flew out so that hotel was uh close to the airport it was about 20 minutes i believe from the airport and that cost us 38 dollars for the night and they also had a restaurant downstairs as well and you can order and they can take the food up to you for the hotels that we stayed at in ukunda diani beach it was coral beach hotel but before we even got to that hotel we had booked an Airbnb and the lady she was very sketchy when we got there so I got mad and I was like take us back to the airport I was telling the driver and he was saying you know he was just gonna drop us off at that hotel and we can check if they had any vacancies and um, we did check and they had it so we stayed there for three nights it's called Coral Beach Hotel the rooms was pretty spacious, pretty big. The customer service as well was pretty good. Um, the only thing that was wrong at the moment, it was uh, they were doing construction. So the water pressure was very low. The, the shower wasn't running at one point. So I had went downstairs and asked a young lady that was down there to let me use her bathroom because she had some water coming through her thing. But if you like, like nature and you enjoy animals and stuff like that you would definitely like that hotel because it's it's centered around like a lot of uh the nature and animals and stuff so maybe when you guys visit it would be better but when we were there the water pressure wasn't the greatest besides that everything else was okay so we stayed there for three nights and it cost us 214 dollars for the three nights after the three nights we went to jacaranda hotel that hotel elite pretty nice i loved it they had a buffet where you're able to get your breakfast and you can either have lunch or dinner that was included 
we paid $470 for the three nights at that hotel and that one was very close to the beach as well um coral beach hotel was close to the beach but jacaranda was more like you could just walk outside your room and go on the beach so that was pretty cool they also had a lot of activities there they had performance every night that you can go to they had like a, a volleyball court where you can you know play um it was just like a, a bunch of stuff there that you were able to do. Plus, you're like right there on the beach, so you know, you can go chill, hang out. Now for the activities. The activities that we did in Nairobi, we booked that on Viator or Viator, however you say it. Some people say it differently, but that's what we use to book our activities. Um, if you just go on the app and you type in like Nairobi, a bunch of stuff will pop up and you see the prices and how many days it is and what's included in there. For the activities in Diani Beach, we actually went through the hotels. They have either somebody working there where they can tell you like what's going on and what the cost is and stuff like that. So any hotel you go to on that strip, they have that service available where you can book stuff through that hotel. And for the transportation in Nairobi, there's taxis and there's Ubers. Keep in mind, the Ubers are a little bit smaller. So if you have like a lot of stuff, you may want to take a taxi, but the Ubers is cheaper than the taxi. We did take the Uber to go to the airport, but um, like both of us had two luggages. So we put both the big ones in the trunk and the two small ones was on the back seat. One of us sat in the back, one of us sat in the front, and that's how we, you know, worked it out to go to the airport. But if there's more of you guys, um, you may want to take a taxi or just order a bunch of Ubers. It's up to you. For the transportation in Diani Beach, you have taxis, motorcycles, and the tuk-tuk. So it's best to have cash on you um, and make sure your, your cash is like changed because some some of them will say like they don't have change and stuff like that so just make sure you have change there's an atm um up the street like it's on the strip of where all the hotels are at you can either take a tuk-tuk to the atm you know get the money out and then you take it back the tuk-tuk back to wherever you want to go to that's what we did because we didn't have any cash on us when we got to uh Diani beach um, but just make sure you have your cash and if, if you get it out the ATM in like bigger bills You can just go inside the bank and get a change into smaller bills And finally for cash you can get your money exchange inside the airport or you can go to the ATM Outside of the airport. I use the ATM outside of the airport is actually just across the street I took out 20,000 shilling the first day I got there and it was $78 when I checked my bank account so in total, I pulled out 60,000 shillings and that lasts me the entire two weeks I was there. That include paying for some of the food, some of the activities, paying for some of the transportation. That lasts me the whole two week while I was there. And don't forget to let your bank know that you're traveling so you have access to your money when you get to your destination. And that brings us to the end of this video. Don't forget to check out my planner down below. And if you found value in this video, go ahead and smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.